Hello friends of Jesus, it's another morning that the Lord has given unto us and this is Echoes of Truth audio series and the series is entitled A Closer Look at the Book of Revelation 14 verses number 6. I sharing is brother Edward Mtinda and today we are looking at audio number 16 as we are looking at the Elijah generation part number two. I believe even before we continue that you have been going through the presentations that we have already done and you are trying to connect the links in the chain of truth even as we continue to unwrap the mysteries that God has revealed unto us through his servants, the prophets and even the apostles. In fact, in the book of Revelation 14 verses number 6, the text that we have been reading, the Bible says, and I saw. So it is the desire of God that his people should see God is trying to open our eyes that we may see the marvelous things that have been written for us and even for our children. Now, I want us to pray so that we can continue with this audio number 16, which is Elijah generation part number two. Our Heavenly Father, it is another opportunity that you have given unto us. Lord bless us, Lord teach us. Lord reveal unto us the things that you have written for us through the prophets and even the apostles. And even as we try to connect the old as well as the new, Lord, reveal these things unto us that we may become wise scribes who bring out of the treasure both old and new things. Lord, bless us and be with us. This is our prayer through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. In our prayer presentation, which was presentation number 15, we were looking at the Elijah generation and as we were looking at the Elijah generation, we were looking at a man who came in the spirit of Elias or Elijah. And this very individual was John the Baptist. And he lived in a time period where wickedness had escalated. And again, there was a sense of lawlessness when Herod married the wife of his brother, Philip. And the wife was Herodias. And we tried to look at John the Baptist and the history of Herod, Herodias, and the daughter who danced before the king, who is Salome. And I, I personally saw something in that text that again Solomon speaks about in the book of Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. Solomon says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done, it is that which shall be done. In fact, if you look at the grammar of the, of the text, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9, Solomon is saying the thing that hath been. He's saying the past events, history, because history is a record of past events. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. Something that has not transpired, an event that has not occurred. This is the definition of prophecy. Prophecy is looking unto something that has not transpired. But again, there is a beautiful principle there. Solomon is trying to say there is no prophecy without history. In fact, at the background of any prophetic message, there must be a historical event or some certain historical scenarios that took place. And that's why we are trying to look at the history of John the Baptist, even as we project our prophetic timeline. Now the Bible said this in the book of in the book of Genesis chapter 18 because I recall and you can go through the presentation again we were looking at Herodias and we compared Herodias to the woman in Revelation 17 and we saw how this woman brought lawlessness and lawlessness was sin and sin is iniquity and iniquity is transgression and transgression again is wickedness. And one of the wickedness that transpired in the days of the Bible was sodomy in the days of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. We read Genesis 13. But we came to, to Genesis chapter 18. This is where I want us to begin our study. Genesis 18 verses number 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass, and then the Bible said that Abraham saw three men. Just allow me to, to read the text. In Genesis 18.1, the Bible says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, 
and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. You see, when God looked at Sodom and Gomorrah, wickedness, corruption, violence had filled the earth. That nation was pervaded with a lot of wickedness. And we are trying to look at the wickedness that this hallowed woman, this strange woman, this whore will bring upon the face of the earth. And the Bible said in the book of Genesis 13.13 13, that one of the ways wickedness will be brought into the world was through Sodom and Gomorrah. But again, God in such a time like that, God will bring a special, a special deliverance. But how? Genesis 18.1, the Bible says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. Even before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, God sent three men. And these three men are a symbol of the messages of the first, the second, and the third angel's messages. So there was a message of deliverance even before destruction. And the message came through the way of three angels. But my grand question in this text was, at what time did the angels arrive in the days of Abraham? Notice Genesis 18.1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. The message of the deliverance will come in a period where we have the heat of the day. And the question is, what is the heat of the day? Just allow me now to walk together with you in the Bible. Now we are walking together in the Bible as we are trying to locate what is the heat of the day. At what time period do we see the heat of the day? The book of Isaiah 49 verses number 10 or just allow me to do a simple one so that you can gather and you can see the point clearly even as we begin to look at the heat of the day. Let's go to James 1, 11. Then we'll go back to Isaiah 49. James chapter 1, verses number 11. Abraham is seeing three angels at the heat of the day. So the three angels or the three men are connected to the heat of the day. God will send a message of deliverance before destruction at the heat of the day. James 1, 11, the Bible says, for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat. So heat is an effect that comes about after the sun has risen. Another word that we can use for the sun being risen is the sun has been erected or it has been raised. It has risen. The sun has been elevated. And at this time period, the earth experiences heat. And in the geographical sense, it makes sense. Anytime the sun is risen, the earth experiences some warmth. Heat is being generated by the sun. In fact, another text shows that the sun is connected to the heat. So we can also say that Abraham was sitting at the time of the sun period in the scriptures. There's a time period in the scriptures which is denoted as the time of the sun. In fact, notice the text again, James 1, 11, the Bible says, For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat. Then the Bible says, But it withereth. So the time of the sun, it is the time of the heat, it is the time of the withering. Allow me to show you again that the time of the sun is the time of the heat. Isaiah 49, 10, the Bible says, there's a portion there, it says, Neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. So anytime we have the heat, it is connected with the sun. Again in the book of Revelation 7 verse 16, the very second portion the Bible says, Neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. So anytime we see the sun, we see the heat. Then God is to send a message of deliverance in the time of the sun. And in this time, the message will be the three men will enter into Sodom and Gomorrah. And the question is, who
who will God use to give this message in the time of the sun? Because the harlot woman is to raise an event that is connected with the sun. And in this time of the sunny time period, then wickedness will pervade the earth. But God will deliver his people through the messages of the first, the second, and the third angel's messages. Allow me to read James 1.11 so that I connect it with something again. James 1.11, the Bible says, For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth. As James was looking at the time of the sun, the time of the heat, he connected that time with the time of the withering. Now we can, we, we, can, we, we can walk in the Bible as we try to look at what is this withering time period. Go with me together in the book of Luke chapter 8. We are looking at the time of the withering. And as Jesus was teaching the parable of the sower, Christ himself mentioned of the time of the withering. In fact, in the book of Luke chapter 8 verses number 6, the Bible says, And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. So again, the withering time, it takes place because crops, they lack moisture. And you and I understand the agricultural model, it is because of the heat, because it causes the water in the soil to evaporate. So the soil remains dry, it lacks moisture, then this is called the withering time. But I want you to notice what the text said at the beginning. It said, And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. So the time of the withering away is the time when the seeds will fall upon a rock. Now I want us to, to look at the rock and the withering time. Because here Christ was teaching about the parable of the sower. And Christ is saying there are seeds which fell upon a rock. And because they lacked moisture, they withered away. And the question could be, why did Christ connect the withering away with the time of the rocks? What is this that was to transpire that is connected with the rocks? That Christ says, on this rock, on this ground, they withered away because they were on the rock. Now, I want us to compare the same text in the book of Luke chapter 8 verse 6 with Matthew 13. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 verses number 5 and verses number 6. The Bible says, some fell upon stony places. Stony places is just a synonym for rocky places. In fact, it is the same parable that Christ was speaking about. So the time of the sun, it is the time of the heat, it is the time of the withering, and the withering time is connected with the rock. The Bible says, some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. Verse 6, and when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Here Matthew is giving some more information. He's giving additional information. In fact, Luke did not mention that the sun was up. He just spoke of the withering time, and we connected with the book of James that the withering time was the time of the heat and the time of the sun. But here in Matthew, Matthew says this, notice, And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. So what is Christ saying? In the time of the deliver, deliverance, in the time of the heat, in the time of the sun, which again is connected to the time of the rock, Christ is saying that which causes with the withering, it is because the crops, they do not have roots. So what is the message? Christ is trying to make a people to have roots in him. Because when the sun approaches, when the heat approaches, when the withering time approaches, they that did not develop roots, they cannot stand. 
and from tomorrow we'll begin looking at some angle of truth that God's people Israel are to be prepared before the sun so that when the sun approaches the three angels are to move from Abraham to the wicked cities because if you study the book of Genesis closely from verse from chapter sorry from chapter from chapter number 13 14 15 going towards chapter 19 you'll realize that the angels first appeared to Abraham then the angels next went to Sodom and Gomorrah so the angels are first to appear to God's people who are likened to Abraham then afterwards the angels are to move to Sodom and Gomorrah to give the final message so may God help us even tomorrow as we try to, to look at this aspect that the angels will first come to Israel, then to the Gentiles. And whatever Christ is trying to communicate is that even before we, we give the message, we also need to realize that when the sun approaches and the angels are empowered to give the final message, then there is a withering time for Israel. And then God is to prepare the world. So even as the angel of Revelation 14 verses number 6, the congregation that God has chosen to give the message as we prepare others, we ourselves should be prepared before the day of the heat, before the sun, before the withering time, before the rocky places. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. As we are approaching the heat of the day, Lord help us. That even as crops will be flourishing, we pray for ourselves that, Lord, you may help us to have developed roots even before this time that is called the time of the heat, the time of the sun. And even as we continue to unwrap the truths that, Lord, have been folded in the Bible, help us to understand in Jesus' name. Amen.